you want to kind of talk about maybe some of your favorite projects that you've done maybe like because obviously you've done quite a bit is there any in particular that stand out that you think that you're allowed to talk about that were quite a moment where you thought yeah this is really cool or what about it was cool some projects i enjoy because the end product looked really good but they were pain to film and they were really laborious some of them were really really fun to film uh, but the end product was i mean was okay but you know it might have been a random corporate thing that just doesn't have much to it from the start i'd say a recent one that i really enjoyed and that i'm quite proud sure. to be to have been involved with is filming a documentary on um on Elliot Kipchoge's sub 2 hour marathon it's a big one with that one we followed Elliot Kipchoge, who is an amazing Kenyan athlete, just, you know, Google his name. He's like... I mean, if you haven't heard of him. Olympic medalist, world <laughs> record holder and all that. Um, yeah. Very, very good runner. <laughs> we went back and forth to Kenya all summer to film Elliot in his training camp in preparation for the attempt of running a marathon in under two hours, yeah. which is a moment in sport history that yeah. is going to go... Crazy achievement. Yeah. It's, Madness. It was really fun going back and forth to Kenya and also... We were in Vienna to film the attempt. Really, really cool part of piece of history, really, to be part of. Yeah, um, so we're crazy. all qu quite proud to have been involved with that. How many times did you go to Kenya? We went there to film him for other things as well. So three or four times we went to film three or four of the episodes. There will be five episodes once they're all released. Um, and the last one being the event itself and the aftermath. What was it like seeing him in training and all of that? Well, it was a little surreal <clears throat> because some of my friends are, are into running and, and they knew who he was. And I, at first, I, well, a couple of years ago when we first started working with his sports management team, uh, I didn't really know who he was. But by the time we were filming for this documentary, we did. And it was, you know, he's, he's a fairly big deal. It was very interesting seeing how these elite athletes train. I mean, I'm sure they all don't train exactly the same way, but these guys were very, very rudimentary means. And they're, you know, they're running on mud tracks in Kenya and sleeping in these kind of dorm room type buildings. So they were um, living as a community of runners? Or is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before seeing that, I had this image from one of those Rocky movies where you have that Russian boxer who has all these team of scientists around him and he's hooked up to machines and they're measuring everything <laughs> and things yeah. like that. These guys, like Elliot, he pretty, well, he's, he's got a, a really good team and a coach and, and all that kind of stuff, but he does a lot of it himself. And, and a lot of, really? of his success, I think, comes from his attitude and his mindset. Because there's the physical challenge of running a marathon in, in that time. But there's the mental challenge as well, which is, you know, there's a huge amount of pressure on you to... Yeah, it's, that's crazy. It's, especially, and it's like, don't give up, don't give up. You've got... Yeah. Especially when you've got someone like making a documentary on how, how to do it. There's, all, you know, there's well, just there's, so much. There's, that's one small part yeah, of the there's, pressure. Yeah, there's, there's not just that. I mean, you know, yeah, we were making the documentary, but... You know, it was just me and Dan, the photographer sure. out there. So we were kind of like a fly on the wall. He, you know, he knew we were around, but he had a much, much wider goal uh, of, you know, he wanted to make history. He wanted to inspire people. He wanted, you know, there was a lot of press around it. There was all the sponsors I, I, at the event itself. And like the number of people involved in making this happen, it was in the, in the, in the hundreds of people and the amount of funding that went into it yeah. you know they they um redid the entire tarmac of of the um circuit he was uh running on in in um in vienna redid all the roads and all that kind of stuff you know there's a lot that went into it a lot of people involved from what he told us in his interviews for him he really wanted to inspire people to show that you can overcome any limit and that you know no human is limited was his his kind of slogan, motto yeah. is his slogan and everyone was very vocal about that and he you know a lot of a lot of pr went into spreading that message so what happens if he fails like oh no human is limited but i didn't manage to do it you know, he, so he it tried like, one previously though and he yeah so this was a second he? time uh the previous one was it was a uh, called breaking two this one is called the Ineos 
ineos 159 challenge the previous attempt was breaking too but that was done with three different athletes okay. and so he wasn't alone doing that so i think the pressure was kind of diluted and it was also you know we're gonna try and run two hours but it wasn't well everyone was said you know everyone was saying oh it's impossible for a human to run two two hours mm -hmm. and then when elliot did it in like i think it was maybe a few seconds off everyone sort of realized oh maybe maybe this this guy can do it so this time around it was like there was a lot more expectations Absolutely, whereas yeah. everyone before didn't really you know, they were like yeah good luck was there any like particular moment that you can kind of take away from that or like when, when you were like filming that you thought right this is really cool or like or, or not you just thought it was quite a challenging environment to film mm -hmm. or anything that you know that re you really took from it well first of all just you know being able to go to travel to kenya yeah for work yeah, whatever the work is is kind of cool um to be able to travel out there to do the job that we do is really cool yeah to be able to see behind the scenes of what these you know incredible athletes are doing because it's not only Elliot out there there's a whole group of Olympic medalists they're all really interesting and they're all really nice people and and it's yeah it's it's an interesting interesting thing to film I mean not not to not to diss corporate videos but it's slightly more interesting than filming of course people in in suits and ties in offices in central London no, it's a completely different style of yeah, video. Yeah, I also enjoy doing the corporate stuff. Yeah, because that has its own sets of challenges. But as we've already discussed previously yes. in this podcast, yes, maybe within like filming, because I know that you know you had to get up at like three a.m. or whatever, four a.m. Oh yes, this is kind of what I'm trying to like get to get to, to get that to. time. The um, <laughs> yeah, my grumpy morning face in that <laughs> beat in behind the scenes video. Uh, yeah, there was that time we had. To, okay, we we would. There were very intense days because these runners, they wake up at the crack of dawn to go run. So we would finish filming at, well, by the time we got back to the hotel, uh, that I, you know, sort out the kit, clean the dust off the lenses, um, backed up memory cards, put all the batteries on charge. Because yeah. I was out there alone, you know, I didn't have a, an AC or anyone. You'd get to bed around midnight. And then we'd be up at three or four in the morning to go and film Mad. film these guys. And at that time, the hotels ha aren't serving breakfast yet. <laughs> so you're up, you know, you're getting dragged out of bed at three or four in the morning, put in the back of a rattly old, what is a Kenyan version of a Jeep. <laughs> it's really cold because it's 2,800 uh, meters altitude. Um, so it is Kenya, but it's 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 really cold in the morning. It gets warmer in the day, but you know, at, at four or five, six, even seven, it's quite cold. Yeah, you know, it's in the back of a jeep that has no windows. It's like a pickup truck type of thing. Have a look at our Instagram and uh, scroll through. You'll or find. Or even the behind the scenes video that you posted on Pro V. Uh, that a part? That's a different thing. That was a previous project. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, similar. Similar, similar. Yeah, similar. similar. But on that one, I just had a mirrorless camera on a, on a handheld gimbal. Okay. And this one, I took the Kinefinity Terra 4K okay. on a Movie Pro with, a, with an easy rig and cinema lenses. No. So <laughs> it's quite a lot of kit to handle as a one-man band, whereas, you know, a zoom lens on a mirrorless camera yes. on a Ronin S with autofocus is a lot easier. There are a few, uh, um, few videos and photos hanging about of me with a really grumpy face in the back of a Jeep in the morning, um, trying to rebalance a movie while we were still driving on really bumpy, rattly roads. And freezing. And freezing cold with no breakfast. But did you get did I shot? say, did I say I didn't get breakfast? Did it, I didn't so have you breakfast. Said that yeah. you, 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 <laughs> I needed my food. Your fuel bars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I eventually got food after the run. And then it was all right. And then everything was, was fine again. And we got some really good shots. Yeah. It was some of the best shots because we were trying to put the equivalent of, uh, the full frame equivalent of a, a hundred mil lens on the Movi Pro. Mm -hmm. It's a quite tight. Which is a bit of a challenge. It's not like it's a wide angle and you can capture everything you need to aim it in the right direction. No, you have to be focused. Um, which is a general rule of filmmaking, aim your camera in the right direction. Yep. But, um, but also focus is quite difficult at, at those focal lengths. Wait, is it, it's not manual focus, is it? Is it, it was manual focus. Oh, wow. okay. And I, I, I didn't even, at the time I didn't even have 
uh, a wireless system or a, 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 focus, puller, yeah. a focus pull thing. Um, now we have a, a little thumb controller to control the focus. On that one, I had to kind of reach around and, <laughs> and set it. the focus and then kind of hope that, yeah, or guess the focus. But you managed. That's the important thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm really Especially. proud of some of those shots. They're, they're really good. And if people wanted to go and see that, they can go and see that in the documentaries on YouTube. Yes. So uh, if you search for Ineos 159 Challenge, on YouTube. I mean, I'm sure we can put some Clicks links in. links in the description of this video or something. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, search for that on YouTube. Whenever we get approval, uh, we'll also have a kind of case studies page on our website yeah. uh, with some details about that shoot.